Hey, hello and welcome back and that's right you saw this coming if you followed this channel for a while you always knew that these two NAS devices were going to get compared I'm of course talking about the Acer Store Flash Store 12 Pro and the new Terramaster F8 SSD Plus two desktop NAS solutions that prioritize and focus on M.2 NVMe storage it's lower power consumption it's much much faster and arguably more expensive but Hopefully by the end of this video I will have helped you decide which one of these two is best for you and your data. Before we go any further though, it's worth highlighting that regardless of which one of these two you go for, there's actually quite a lot they've got in common. So before we go any further, let's talk about what you get regardless of which one of these to buy. Number one, you are getting a very affordable M.2 NVMe solution. You are getting a system that manages the RAID internally, you've got mobile apps to can, you know, manage your system remotely as well as desktop client applications for backup, for synchronization and more. Both of them are turnkey NAS solutions. That means that not only are you getting the hardware, but you're getting a full operating system included with it. Also, both of these platforms support the use of third-party operating systems like Unraid, TrueNAS, OpenMediaVault, and more without it invalidating your hardware warranty, which is lovely stuff. Both of them feature 10 GBE, more on that later on. They both support Intel CPU, more on that later on. And both of them use a very, very similar software architecture that supports both ext 4 and BTRFS as its file system of choice. But that's enough about what they've got in common. You came to this video to understand the difference and what is best for you. One of the first and earliest differences between them is the release difference. The Terra Master was released in September 2024, whereas the flash store was in spring 2023 somewhere between april and may depending on where you are in the world so a huge difference there of well in excess of a year and a bit so what about those differences well number one what about the price tag weirdly despite the price diff i'm sorry the time difference in their release the price of both of these devices is extraordinarily close with the flash door retailing across numerous retailers between around $779 and $799. That's across Amazon, B&H, and a bunch of other retailers. Uh, the Terramaster FASD Plus, uh, a lot newer. It's price tag nowhere near as flexible right now, but it still retails at $799. So there's really only $20 or $30 between them. And even then, I imagine this will come down in price relatively soon. And that's much, much closer to the RRP, but still... That price difference, although obviously it would be very easy to say this one wins this round because it's cheaper, the price difference is so small given the date difference between them that I think there's a little bit of hmm, give and take there between the two of them. So moving away from the price tag and what you're paying, I think it's important to talk about value. Both of these systems kind of present a different stance on value. Now what do I mean by that? Well, if you go down to the design, they're actually almost identical in terms of volume. The difference between them, this one is definitely the smaller, but I know it looks like the, t uh, the Acer Store is significantly bigger. If we lay it on the top, we can see it's bigger. It's also deeper than the flash door. And actually volumetrically, there's a huge amount of difference between them in terms of physical footprint in your own office or home location there. Now, the CPU inside the flash drive is obviously the older of the two because it was released a lot earlier. It takes advantage of the N5105 or N5095. There is some different CPU runs there from Intel. It's a quad-core CPU with a 2.0 gigahertz clock speed that can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz. It also arrives with 4 gig of DDR4 memory and that uh, system across all of the M.2 NVMe base is 3 times 1 speed on all of them. Now, uh, that CPU has a 10 watt TDP uh, power reported heat and power consumption and an integrated graphics uh, that starts at 450 megahertz that can be burst up to 800 megahertz when needed for the integrated graphics. Now, what's changed in a year? Well, first and foremost, the Terramaster arrives with a much newer and more powerful and larger N305. It's an i3 8 core process. It's got eight threads, that's got four threads, but still, that's a lot more under the bonnet. With a 1.8 gigahertz uh, base level clock speed that can be burst up to 3.8 gigahertz, that is almost twice that of the Acer Store. The CPU has a 15 watt TDP and its integrated graphics start at a slightly lower 350 megahertz, but it can go up as high as 1.2 gigahertz for integrated graphics handling there on board. So again, 
more power under the bonnet is the big takeaway here and yes that higher ttdp does mean it's going to slightly be more consuming of the old lecky build there now memory it arrives with 16 gig of ddr5 memory that can be scaled up to 32 gig so it arrives with four times as much base memory as the flash door and could be scaled up twice as high in terms of the maximum so again this is why we talked about price when we really should be talking about value because you actually get more in terms of your hardware in this solution but you would expect that as it's a newer solution overall and indeed a couple of things to note number one this Acer Store Flash Door, the Acer Store are working on a newer revision of this system. That doesn't, I don't know if it's going to replace this, but that newer system is a pinch beast. Look it up, Flash Door Gen 2, there'll be a link in the description. And on top of that, the, both of these systems also arrive with a slightly pared down version in the Flash Store 6 and the F8 SSD Non Plus. But even when you compare those two at very similar pricing points at 499 and 459 respectively, the Acer Store has the same CPU as you see here, whereas this has a newer N5, uh, N95 CPU and 16 gig of memory and still has 10 GPE, but more on that in a moment. The point I'm making is, even when you scale things down, the TerraMaster still gives you a better value for money in terms of hardware currently, but again, you would expect that given it's the newer solution. Next up, storage. Between these two, storage is definitely different. The Acer Store here has 12 M.2 NVMe slots internally. 12 of them all at 3 times one feeding into a PCI switch internally to manage it all. That is a lot of storage. Even if you go ahead and go for more affordable M.2 NVMe's at 1 TB, that's still 12 slots to play with. You can create multiple pools and volumes. And keep in mind, of course, at times one speed, that does bring down the temperatures, but there's still gonna be 12 m2 nvmes inside here so that cooling is going to have to you know really put the hours in now the terra master fa as the name suggests has only got eight slots by comparison now it is still a very small chassis uh, scaled down from that of the acer store but realistically with m2 nvmes the maximum you can get is 8 tb but they are outrageously expensive most users are going to opt for the 2 or the 4 tb options and realistically that means that the acer store flash door has a larger potential storage that you can scale up towards as you gradually add drives and a much lower uh, glass ceiling on the TerraMaster by comparison by a third. So at least in terms of base level storage, one cannot deny that the flash door has certainly got a lot more going for it. But I think things do change ever so slightly when we start talking about expandability and the ports and connections. As previously discussed, both of these systems arrive with a 10 GBE output on them. So that means 10 gigabit connection there or 1000 megabytes per second is possible. I really, really, really don't like that either one of these only you know either one of these only has the one 10 gb there's no failover 2.5 g 10 g i don't like it when all my eggs are in one network basket but we have to at least acknowledge the usb ports because the flash door arrives with two 10 gig usb ports usb 3.2 gen 2. the TerraMaster has three of them there now notwithstanding that we can add um uh, usb network adapters for 2.5 g and 5 G network connections onto these to expand up our level of network connectivity down the road. But those USB ports across both of these are, in terms of storage capacity, you have more capabilities here on the TerraMaster. What do I mean by that? Well, both platforms have expansion devices that connect over USB. To, um, Acer Store here only have a couple of formidable ones, at least in terms of the 10 gig USB connection. Whereas TerraMaster have a huge range of 10 gig USB expansion devices that go all the way up to nine bays of expandability. Then they've got their hybrid devices like this one here, which has four hard drive bays and four M.2 NVMe bays in an expansion connected via a USB. Now there's other things you can do with those USB ports, but at least in terms of storage expandability via those ports, TerraMaster does bring you more ports and connections to the fold, but we have to also acknowledge that not only does the Acer Store be one of the only real NAS brands out there that are still producing SPDIF audio output for you multimedia unit users, but although both users, both devices have got an HDMI output, 
The Asus Store is the only brand of the two that has a dedicated GUI in their Asus Store portal. That means that not only can you access the device locally and via remotely via the internet, but you can attach an HDMI output and have a completely unique parallel running GUI via the HDMI output that's just not available on the TerraMaster platform. Yes, you can take advantage of the HDMI in TrueNAS and the like, but their own default TOS software doesn't really have anything to utilize it out the gate currently. Now, software is gonna be a biggie here because both of these devices I've done dedicated full length reviews on in terms of performance, power consumption, and more. And of course, the software ADM and TOS. And between the two of them, Neither one of them is the market leader in terms of the NAS operating system that arrives with your system. As mentioned, they've got a lot in common. They both run BTRFS. They've both got multi-backup, uh, multi-site backup and cloud backup and USB backup uh, tools. They both support write once, read many or worm. They've both got multi-factor authentication, two-step. Two they both utilize a remote relay official service that allows you to access the system remotely from their respective servers. Both of them have got multimedia tools. Both of them have got um, surveillance tools, although arguably the surveillance platform on the Acer Store is a little better at the moment. And after that, that's when things get a little blurry. So, for example, the Acer Store platform has everything we've discussed, but it also has a greater degree of those multimedia applications in first and third party. Also, as mentioned, the HDMI output over G GUI is also bolstered by a wide variety of mobile and desktop client tools for Mac, for Windows, for iOS, and Android. TerraMaster has much, much, much fewer client applications by comparison. Now, flicking over to a uh, TerraMaster, it's worth highlighting that they too have got their own unique advantages. Things like their isolation mode in TOS 6 there and TOS 5 allow you to switch off all remote access when needed and disable third-party PHP at the touch of a button. Also, they've got AI photo recognition there, something that Acer Store still has yet to integrate into their platform, at least at the time of recording this video. The software themselves across both of them, I think the more visually appealing, despite TOS being newer, I actually prefer the look uh, of the ADM platform. I find it more intuitive, and particularly since TOS 6 has upgraded to a slightly Windows 11 aesthetic, I've been drawn more and more to Acer Store's slightly more Android-esque icon desktop design there, but it's not gonna be for everyone. Ultimately, both of these platforms provide just something a little bit different in terms of software. I think for the home user, for someone that doesn't really have a larger tech understanding and want to get rid of the jargon, the Acer Store is going to be very appealing. But if you are someone looking for a lot more file service utilization there and want to take advantage of the hardware to a greater degree, you're probably going to enjoy TOS 6 more as it has a few more modern features uh, currently being integrated into it that are just not available on the Acer Store platform currently. And so, what do we think? What's the conclusion? Well, it will come as no surprise to say that if you want the maximum amount of storage, the Acer Store is going to be good for you. It's going to have a lower power consumption generally in use, even with 12, 12 M.2 NVMEs inside. And ultimately, if you are looking for a low footprint, high internal performance system, the Acer Store is a great choice. Also, that price point is probably going to get even lower as the newer unit arrives on the scene, and it already has a year to a year and a half in the market anyway, in terms of availability. Now, the TerraMaster, on the other hand, gives you more power, more capability, more functionality, and is a great deal more compact as well. It's the newer of the two, and unfortunately that is reflected in the price. If you want to get more for your money, the TerraMaster is going to be the option for you. Notwithstanding all of the features I've just described, it's a newer CPU, you get more memory, you've got more USB expandability there. It's just ultimately a newer and more advanced product, at least in terms of hardware between the two of them. The software, there's some give and take, but between the two of them, this is the one that's gonna make the bigger splash and has got more capability to get the job done. But the Acer Store is a far more discreet footprint and large storage capacity out of the gate should not be ignored. But what do you guys think? Do you own one of these two devices? Why not let me know in the comments? It'll be interesting to see which one you go for or which one you already have gone for. Let me know. There should be an article linked below over on NAS Compares that breaks down a lot of this video into a greater degree of detail. I recommend you check that out. But apart from that, there are links to both of these systems in the description. And if you were going to go to Amazon B&H or whatever, and if you found this video helpful, two things very important. If those two things are true, 
please use the links in the description to take you to those respective stores. Anything you buy will result in a small commission over to me and Eddie. It's just us here at Nas Compares, and it allows us to keep doing what we do. I'll see you next time.